Well, that was kind of the fall of the House of Usher. I think that was probably our first time as a double-hander. Uh, all the way through, I think it probably was. And it'll change again by the time of the show, because there's another section, another detail I want and, to And it's in. one of those stories you always say, it has to be said, I have to confess, you've got me all banged to rights, I never read these stories. She reads them and tells them to me. But you've said that I've lost something from the original. Well, it's just n- not really. I mean, it's it's a very difficult thing to do. I find with you know any literary tale, it's really hard to strip it down and tell it in a storytelling style because you're taking something that's fundamentally words and a whole lot of words in the case of something like Edgar Allan Poe, and a lot of it is in the description, and then you're changing it radically into a storytelling tale, which is basically narrative theatre but it's massively stripped down you you know you you turn whole paragraphs into a, like a single sentence and you're lighting, moving, uh, lighting look, shows i thought we might do a little lighting show with that one yes uh, but i mean I'll you're also the UV. stripping down the plot and things like that that that's all I, I meant by it but um in the original obviously the language is very beautiful so the house isn't just creepy it's 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 dazzling there's something beautiful about it and there's a very strange sky and there's a link with a, a dream and a painting as well that was I why know. i was doing all the the uh, anyway you'll do some of that you'll yes. have you'll have your Groderick do it or it won't yes. be done yes. but yes. i hope it works as a story it kind of reminds us of too many people we know who are caught up in things yeah but that re- of- but that means we probably ought to banish the curse so you've got your b- curse banishing kit with you I have indeed. Uh, so, uh, sort of at the end of uh, certainly our Halloween shows, we have, uh, well, we often anyway have an end of end of show blessing. So, and an end of show, um, well, an invocation and a blessing, and they're both by Ben Johnson. And um, here's the invocation, and it's the witch's song. The owl is abroad, the bat and the toad, and so is a cat to mountain. The ant and the mole sit both in a hole, and frog peeps out of the fountain. The dogs they do bay, and the timbrels play, the spindle is now a-turning. For the moon is red, and the stars are fled, for all the sky is a-burning. That was wonderful. So the witch's song, yes, I learned that when I was eleven because I loved it so much. I you said you had two of them, can't so you have that one. I found it. And yes, and this this is this is the actual blessing because that that can come earlier in the show that that kind of one, but this one sort of has closed a number a number of our shows and it's yeah it's just a blessing to the audience for having sat through you know sat through the journey that we we've been on with them and um, and it works the blessing. It's I think it's a, a fairy song from from Ben Johnson. The fairy beam upon you, the stars to glister on you, a moon of light in the noon of night till the fire drake hath o'ergone you. The wheel of fortune guide you, the boy with the bow beside you, run I in the way till the bird of day and the luckier lot betide you. And then everybody gets showered with confetti, so that's very nice. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> 